So before I move to Lagos, there's this person in my life that has kind of been very, very permanent. You know, he's like where who I used to get my definition from. He's like he was like my my validation. He used to he used to be my validation. He used to validate me. Oh my god. He made me feel like I was the prettiest girl in the whole world, like I was the smartest girl in the whole world. Like he made me feel like there's just one of one of me on this planet. Like there's no another one. There's nothing that I can't achieve. He made me feel like there's nothing I literally cannot, cannot achieve from life. Honestly, like, and he's such a high quality man that having that kind of validation from somebody of such high quality made me feel so validated. I didn't think, I didn't feel the need to want to prove a point to anybody on this planet. Like, I felt like, I had already won in life because being validated and his words and his actions match so when he's validating me with his words like his actions he really made me feel genuinely feel like i have become the greatest human being on this planet like i'm the greatest woman on this planet i embodied that i accepted and i loved it until things started to go sour and i kind of wanted to go a different route from what he was expecting you know like i wanted to go a different route at least to my own perspective i wanted to go a different route and when i was going to lagos we kind of had a very difficult conversation this is someone that i know that when he's mad he says things that he doesn't mean but because i was kind of his treasure he would never do that to me you know but that very day the conversation got very heated and then he said some things to me that i know for sure that he doesn't mean because he will always have my best interest at heart but he said something very, very a normal day that would have crushed my soul. Because imagine having someone validate you so much, and then all of a sudden the person just says this about you. Like, is that who I've been all this while? Like, is that really your opinion about me? You know, it would have really crushed my soul on a normal, on a good day if I had not started to do the like foundational work. But when he said that to me, I literally said back to him, like I literally typed it. I didn't even think about it. Like I didn't even the word he said to me didn't even crush. He didn't hit me, he didn't, it wasn't like, oh my god, he said this. In, immediately, I just wrote back. And I feel right now that it was just God that just helped me just shove that off, you know. And then I was like, unfortunately, I don't get my definition from you anymore. And that's why I sat back and I was like, okay, I wish you well and all that. So, why am I making this video now? Why am I starting from there? Like I said, he used to validate me. Honestly. Like no from a no from a he doesn't want nothing from me. I'm telling you, like he did not want nothing from me. He just honestly, honestly loved me as a person and validated me so much. But because of the route that I'm now taking, at least to my perspective, I keep saying to my perspective, the route that I now want to take, I'm moving to Lagos and I'm going after some very dangerous things. It's like or some characters, because I'm now changing. Some some characters that I'm now displaying is like it's new to him, you know. All of a sudden I'm now I'm now this very terrible monster you know that that I, i'm not i'm no longer that special pretty princess that you love i'm not like this very terrible monster all of a sudden and you're saying hopeful words to me you know so if i had not already started this journey that i'm i'm about to tell you guys now i would have felt crushed i would literally have stayed i don't think i would have moved i think i would have stayed indoors i would have cried for so long but because subconsciously I already took the power that I gave him from him. I already took it back to myself subconsciously. So it's like, I don't care what you have to say at this point. I don't care what you think at this point. I respect you still. I'm going to respect you till I die. But I don't care what you think because I have now come to a place that I have now come to believe my own self. I've taken my power back literally from you. So you can't crush me because, um, because because you can't understand where I'm at right now. You don't want to crush me. You can't crush me. And you know the funny thing about all the, like, the kind of vast reaction I would have had to that, to his statement is that he actually didn't mean it. I'm for sure that he didn't mean it. You know, but because I take every word that comes out from his mouth literally because he says, like, things that uplift me. So I've gotten used to program myself that everything this person says is the truth. You know? So even at that point, like, him saying those words to me is like, it's like, he didn't mean it, but for me, I've taken his, like, my mental is like, everything this person says is true, everything he says is final, you know? But if I had not started this journey, like, if I had not started doing this 
foundational work on myself i would have been a, i would have been very very fucked up because of that statement that he said and he wouldn't know because he didn't mean it you know and because he's a man he might not just come to you directly and say you know what i apologize i'm sorry for what i said but do you understand what i'm saying so if you're watching this video and you're like me or you used to be like me or you used to be like the old me and you're giving your power to someone something because let me tell you something 99% of us, 90% 90 of people literally don't know that their power is not in their hands anymore. They have given it away to something. <laughs> people are walking around here with fear. Damn, I used to. Like, people are walking around here seeking validation. People are walking around here, like, scared, bro. Like, literally scared because of their identity is now tied to something, some reputation, some... It's really crazy what you can actually give your power to without being aware. From a very honest place like you don't even know but you have given your power to this thing some of us have given our power to love the person you love some of us have given our power to money the amount of money you have some of us have given our power to our physical appearance some of us have given our power to the fact that we are young some of us have given our power to the fact that our parents are rich some of us have given our power to you don't know the identity that you have literally given your power to and that's why i'm making this video because once you give your power to something you 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 kind of are not the owner of your life anymore it's like this thing now begins to dictate or this person now begins to dictate how your life is going because you're giving your power to that person or that thing and that's why i'm making this video first of all giving your power like i was let me just say validation because whatever you give your power to validates you it makes you feel like you are that thing you know so giving your power away first of all is an addiction because you get addicted to that thing that you're giving your power to you you have i see people that are addicted to work they are genuinely addicted to work they want to work because that's where their definition is from if i'm not working what am i doing i've seen people that that's why in this life you don't judge because judging is like the most stupid thing you can be doing as a human being judging you don't know what that person is like you don't know you, I, like it's so crazy to me like when people spend time judging other people what are you doing i'm not perfect but like i've come to a place where i'm a bit more self-aware so when i see myself catch myself judging i just cut it off because it's so stupid to judge because you don't know the cards that life has dealt this person that made them to be who they are it's either you can deal with the person or you cannot why are you judging you know so the first thing is just like every other addiction when you give your power away you have to take you have to replace that addiction with something else you don't give your power away and then bring it back to yourself for instance in my own situation the fact that this man had the power over me yeah if i revive i've taken my power back from this person yeah where am i putting that power in i'll feel helpless because my power comes from him so i'm taking my power from him and then i'm putting it where in me i'm not too sure of myself at the time why would i put my power in myself do you understand so it's like it's i can't take it back because i don't have anywhere to put it and that's how addiction is when you're addicted to something you have to replace that thing with something else to be able to get out of the addiction if you're addicted to what am i going to use now you know do you know that there's an addiction for music that's a whole different kind of vibe like me i used to feel like i had an addiction i still do and i don't think it's hurting anybody so it's not a bad thing you know but i can't go a whole day and not listen to music i can't be around people that don't listen to music i, I get offended you know so let's say you're addicted to music and you're trying to take out music from work now i'm getting i'm falling in love with working you know so when i have music on i was like okay i'm gonna play music while i walk you know so that's besides the point you know, so you have to <laughs> you guys honestly anyway let me know this so what was i think uh -huh. when you take an when you are trying to heal yourself from an addiction you look for something else to replace that addiction and gradually gradually you forget about your former former addiction you understand so if you are trying to take your power back this is the best advice on the planet that anybody can give to you go back to where you dropped it pick it pick it up and then put your power in the word of god so the literally honestly you guys i will not tell you guys anything that i will not tell my child to be very honest, like I will not come on this channel and say anything that I know that my child is going to, my daughter is going to come and watch and going to spoil her life. I will not tell you guys anything that I will not tell my own child, my child. So when I tell you that the first way to take your power back is to go back to the word of God. Somebody said to me recently, he said, <laughs> he said, 
like I didn't bargain to fall for a preacher. He was like, I'm falling for a preacher. <laughs> and it's just the truth because if you come around me, I'm gonna preach. I can't even see except I'm not talking around you. But if I get to that that comfortable and I'm talking with you, I'm gonna preach to you to be honest. Because why not? Because there's so many things that that there's so many opinions. What I'm doing right now is now is an opinion. This is based on my own life experience, based on research that I've done. It's my own opinion. You don't have it's not facts. You can you are hundred percent allowed to not accept it and not say, okay, yeah, I believe what she's saying and I'm gonna live according to what she said. You know, so there's no fact. Everything keeps changing. But like I always say, there's just one thing that has not changed. Why would I not back myself on that thing? I know this thing is never gonna wake up one day and change on me. The Bible. And when I say the Bible, I mean like the word of God still says I'm loved. God is still saying I'm loved. It doesn't change based on what I'm change how I change. You know, whatever I become, I've like I'm young, but like I've been I, I'm I like I've lived different roles right now. You know, so every different role that I have lived, at every point, I can still go back to the word of God and say, and I still feel validated, I still feel love from God. So anything I'm doing now, I get my validation from the word of God. This is not an affirmation. That's why nothing anybody can say to me now can actually get to me. That person was the person that was on the pedestal. I mean, apart from family, that person was the person that was on the pedestal that could tell me stuff and I would listen. I think that God was trying to tell me that you can't put your whole trust in this person. You know, sometimes God will let certain people disappoint you so you know that you can't trust a man no matter how damn near perfect men we are we're not perfect so you can't put your trust in a human being you know so first thing to take your power back is the scripture go back to the word of god like god has called you royal priesthood he has called you holy nation he has called you uh uh proverb 31 woman he has called you the the he has called you the what's this one word that rivers will flow from your belly it rivers, it rivers flow from a mad person, like from, from a bipolar person. Right now, and there's so many, as I'm getting to know myself, there's so many characteristics that I'm seeing that when I go on the internet to try and define what I have, I'm, all, I'm just like, what is all these things? Bipolar, ADHD, different, different definitions, like the, all of them I've defined. Also. So when I see like symptoms of them, you know, I just go back to the word of God and say, I don't accept that I have HDG or bipolar, whatever. I don't accept all that. God is going to work on me on all that. Because who wants to be bipolar? It's not really easy, like, being around. The, I've not been around a bipolar person. But, like, the people that are around me, I love them so much. I don't want to wake up one day and be, and just switch up on them because I'm bipolar. Because I, I accepted that I'm, I'm bipolar. Or because, you know, I'm reading about different things. And I'm seeing that, okay, this characteristics that I have, the people that have the characteristics that I have, they're great people, you know. They are grateful. So somehow they've been they've managed to manage it. You know? All this stuff. Like, so I don't take my definition from anything. So you should not take your definition from anything from the book. If you know how the Bible describes you as a woman, you will know that life doesn't come to existence without you. Do you know how powerful you are for life to not be able to come through without you? No matter what, life cannot come through. Another life cannot be made without you. Do you know how powerful you are? Do you know how powerful you are? So God created life and then he said, the source I'm going to use to bring this life to mankind is through a woman. Well, literally so powerful. So that's why there's so many definitions to try and cloud you from that power to make you feel like you are not that powerful. Relax, squeeze yourself. Don't touch, don't shine too much. Calm down. You know, and then the second thing that I did that to take my power back is to be honest with myself. When I started being very, very honest with myself, it was hard. It was very hard because you come to the realization that all the problems that you have in your life is actually your fault. Where you are right now is your fault. That mess you are in right now is your fault. When you become honest, you take accountability. Like, it's my fault. I'm accountable for everything that's going on right now. It's my fault. So, taking your power back is... Being honest is so crucial to taking your power back because once you're honest with yourself, you cannot be accountable to yourself. You cannot be accountable. You cannot be accountable to yourself and to your own actions. You can now say, "I am responsible for being for," and that's why I feel like that's what the whole adulting, adulting thing is about. When you now step in and say, "You know what? I'm actually, you know what? I'm actually responsible. I, I can actually do this. You know, like this is my responsibility. I can't run away from me. You know, because me, honestly, prior to moving to Lagos, I always say this. I'm, I was always taking care of. I was providing for. I was actually a child." 
I was literally a child. So coming here is like, oh, this is my responsibility. My happiness is my responsibility. Everything I do around me is my responsibility. It's not anybody's responsibility to make me happy. It's just like I was blessed, you know? So stepping out from like taking your power back is going to make you really like being accountable and like being accountable and very honest is going to make you take your power back. And do you know, the, you know why, why I made this video? Why I'm making this video here? Yeah? When I started taking my power back, that's when I started actually making progress. Because if you don't take your power back, you'll be in survival mode for a long time. And you can't do anything from survival mode. You'll be a victim of life. The thing you can do on this earth is to be a victim of life. Because <laughs> you'll just be deceiving. You just be, you'll just be wasting your time and wasting the time of your kids, your own kids. Because the, the battle you don't want to fight, they're going to have to come and fight it. You know? So being a victim is a total waste of time. So get out from that victim mentality it's not easy but that's why i started this with the word of god the word of god is going to give you strength so get in the word of god and start to like be, be honest with yourself and begin to take accountability i think my next step will be become selfish yeah i know some people, some people are at this point but well, nobody's watching so well some people will become selfish oh sorry i mean become selfish yes become selfish put yourself first put yourself first well, with putting yourself first, I think why I've not become too selfish to the point that, you know, everybody else can go and die is that I'm still kind. So when you are becoming selfish, still stay kind, you know, but become selfish. Put yourself first. Except you have kids, obviously, like put your kids first. But put yourself first. Let nobody come before you. But stay kind with it because when you are selfish, especially when you are coming from a place that, you know, you didn't have your power, you were trying to please somebody you know if you come back to home you take your power back if you not get to if you don't want to go extreme like you know what i don't care i don't care you'll become too that's not who you are you're not now flowing you have become too i don't care i don't care it happened to me i lost somebody very good because that was that was the version of me that that person met like i had become so closed up and cold-blooded i was trying to protect myself but that's not going to help you that's not going to help you honestly so you have to become selfish but be kind with it still be selfish but be kind still why I mean selfish, I mean just put yourself first. Because I feel like if everybody was looking inwards, instead of I think I'll just let this earring go at this point because yo, ah. Oh. If everybody was looking inwards in the world and not looking outwards, trying to pinpoint, trying to judge, you are not following the right way, you are bad. I thought you said you are Jesus Christ. I thought like what you are doing is not good. If everybody was not trying to judge, if everybody was looking inwards, everybody was a bit selfish, worried about themselves. I feel like we'll be in a better place. Like we're in a kind world, you know? So be selfish with him. Be very selfish. Be very selfish and be kind. Go, oh, don't become cold, you know? Don't become cold. That's not what I'm saying when I say selfish. You still care about human beings, but you care about yourself first because you cannot pour from a cup that is empty. When everybody's coming to... Have you ever seen anybody going to fetch water from a dry well? Nobody goes to a dry well. So you cannot pour from a cup. You can't give what you don't have, no matter how you try to... I, I've, been, I ha I've had a friend that I wanted to give out the world, but I don't have it. I didn't have it. I wanted to give out love, compassion everything but at the time i didn't have it you know and i was working towards it i was working towards getting it but this is that's no she's not supposed to be on the journey because she was a good friend to me you know so she's not supposed to be on the journey waiting for me to walk towards it and give it to her do you understand but like you can't give what you don't have and that's like one of my biggest motivation now to like now that i'm getting it myself you know I want to give so i have to have it because i people around me they deserve so i need to work to get it so i can give you can't give what you don't have you can't be looking out for everybody and not looking out for yourself my dear you're going to be drained and you're going to you're going to live a very sad life if you're looking out for everybody and not looking out for yourself be selfish or be kind with it and then understand why the bible kept saying do not be afraid 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 because like until you get in the field you don't know how much fear has been holding you back you have been you have been tagging it with so many things like oh and it's not like I'm scared though. It's just that, you know, I'm a bit shy. It's not like I'm scared though. I just want some privacy. It's not like I'm scared though. You're just hiding behind fear. Everything you're saying is fear. You're not... I feel like now we're in a place where mystery is selling. It's very good to be mysterious, you know. But there are people that I have followed that I have seen that they've been able to 
do what God sent them on this earth to do. They are making money. They are living a very peaceful and happy life. They are updating people, inspiring people, and we don't know anything about them still. So mystery doesn't mean that you should not go and don't hide behind mystery. It's still from a place of fear. You know, because if you are so mysterious, people cannot come at you because not, they don't know anything about you. They can't come at you with it, you know. So it's still from a place of fear because you don't want people's opinion, which is okay. But don't let, don't give your power away to fear. And me saying this now, I'm still, because fear is so, so, fear is such a tool. Fear is such a tool that the enemy is using to tie so much, most of us down. Fear, you don't understand how much fear, how much fear. And then at the end, at the end of the road, you're like, what am I really scared of? And I feel like that's one of the things, one, that's one of the positive side to hitting rock bottom. Because when you hit rock bottom, to be very honest, like respectfully, when you read his rock bottom, it's like, okay, the worst that's the worst that can possibly happen to me has happened. And by rock bottom, I mean it could be anything for you, you know. But when you hit rock bottom, for me, like this person that I I thought like, oh, we to, I already found my person, so we are together forever for life, you know, my relationship, my friends, and whatever. And then now walking away for me was like, this is rock bottom because this is all I I was kind I was trying to protect, you know. But they've gone. Like I didn't die. Did I die? So people will leave you to die. For sure. And you have left people to die too. Do you understand? Like, everybody should just flow. So, people will leave you to die and you don't die. Life continues. Your, your greatest fear is gone. Like, we're losing money, you're making more. Do you understand? Like, there's nothing to be scared of, honestly. Because there's nothing to literally be scared of. There's nothing to be scared of. People don't care about you. Do you know how the fact that I'm even talking to the camera is a miracle? It's a miracle because I wouldn't even take pictures. I would take pictures of everybody. Like, you know, I would take pictures, yeah. But, like, I wouldn't speak to a camera because I would be like, what are you saying to people? What are you coming? What are you telling people? What are you recording your life for? Who cares? You know, that's the kind of limiting thought. And that brings me to negative self-talk. That's another thing that's really stealing your power from you. Negative self-talk. And the thing is that that's where the word of God comes in. Because that's what is curing me. That's what is healing me. It's not, it's not a day journey. <laughs> one thing about Jesus Christ or one thing about God is that you always, always keep learning him. He's the most mysterious thing that's ever... Like he's... You can never figure it all out. You understand? So... But these days, because I now know the gospel of Christ, yeah... Oh, I know it's like I know I'm, I'm I'm knowing God. I'm really understanding God and the power that He has given me that I I almost gave away. You know, I'm not understanding that literally nothing can take my power except I give it to you. If I'm not giving my power, you can't take it. First of all, if I'm not giving you my power, you cannot take it. If I'm not giving you my power, you cannot take it. So when my when negative thoughts come. Like I said, nobody can take your power. Even the devil can take your power, except you give it to him. You know, so all those negative self-talk is when he can weaken your heart and weaken your spirit. Like you just hear the voice, you don't deserve, you're not supposed to be here, you're not worthy. All the things you're having, you're not worthy of it. It's not you, like you're a fraud star. That's a very demonic spirit. And like the like some, I was telling my brother the other day, I said, do you remember somewhere in the scripture when God said, when somebody, um, is it Peter or who was trying to cast out the demon, and then they said, the demon said, Peter, we know, uh, Paul, we know, who are you? That's how it's going to be. So if I'm saying negative self talk is coming to my mind, for instance, I will, you won't be successful. Stop bothering yourself. That's self talk that's coming to your mind. Or you're not good enough. Or who do you think is going to watch you? Or, you know, all those kind of negative self talk, you have to counter it with the word of God because you can't just start saying, it's okay. I'm good enough. I'm, I can do it. I got this. I'm okay. On what basis? On what basis? What you believe in has to be stronger than what is what is attacking you. What you believe in has to be stronger than what is coming for you. So for me, like like I said, this video is an op is my opinion. It's not fact. But for me, when you have the word of God, you can literally just speak it over your life. Over the negative self-talk. You can speak it over your life because that's a very limiting thing. It's, it limits us so much. It takes our power away because it's not real. Your mind is your universe. Your mind is your world. It only exists in your mind if you allow it. If you allow it, only what you allow into your world is what's going to is what is what is going to be. It's the, only what you allow into your world is what's going to be real. Your world is the only thing that is real. Your your mind is your reality. I tell myself all those kind of things like, Mario, you're so stupid. Mario, you're so foolish. Mario, you're so ugly. Why? The whole world 
is already a bit harsh. People are already so judgmental. Why would you allow your head to judge you too? You're the one that is always with you through every circumstance, through every situation. You've never left yourself. Why would you not allow yourself to judge you and say those kind of devilish things to yourself if it's not the devil? Like, am I a good person? Because I've... I have been in a place where like I've questioned myself if I'm a good person, if I'm actually as good as I think I am. I'm actually a good person, you know. So if I go back to the word of God and I'm seeing the word of God, call me a royal priesthood, call me things, call me um, a, a, a holy nation, like calling me light, calling me the salt of the earth. We God give all these rules to a bad person. Do you understand? So that's like the validation I need. So I don't need you to now come and tell me I'm a good person. Bro, I'm just going to do my part. Whether you see I'm a good person or not, that's up to you. You know? So, when you can actually take your power back because it's a lie. You see the way I told you. I'm the one telling you, you're not ugly. You're not stupid. You're not a mistake. You're not a, you're not a lazy person. You're not a bad person. You're deserving. You're very deserving. You're not wicked. You are bold. You are not a stammerer. You are not a. You don't have ADHD. You do. You are not bipolar. Whatever. If nobody has told you, let's get it, get it. <laughs> if nobody has told you, I am telling you. Okay, I'm telling you. My lightning has started going bad because it's getting dark. Because it's, like, it's getting dark, so I'm just going to wrap up this video here. If you can't see it, even if everybody around you can see it and you can't see it, you're not going to be anything because you don't have the power. And if you don't see your power, you can't achieve anything. Victims don't change the world. So come out of survival, survival mode and step back into your power. Don't forget that you are the one. You're already what you need to be. Nobody can take it away from you. Nothing. You have the certificate of ownership. It's already your own. So even if somebody borrowed it, they're going to give you back when you realize your power. Take it back, okay? Take it back, girl, and let's do what we're supposed to do together. I love you. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Okay, bye. Love you.